Oh, hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of First Canada Live. We are back. We are after the Ontario Provincial Championship, and we are wrapping up the crescendo season in Ontario and looking ahead to the crescendo season at the World Championship in Houston. So it's going to be a great show, folks. So thank you for being here. I'm your host, Karthi Canicus of Apathy, and let's get started. And, you know, we're going to start like we always do on this show, because as Canadians, it is important to recognize the land of which we are a part. As we gather for this meeting physically dispersed and virtually constructed, let us take a moment to reflect upon the meaning of place, and in doing so, recognize the various traditional lands on which we celebrate today. We acknowledge the elders and youth, past, present, and emerging of all the land on which we work and live. We honor the ancestral spirits with gratitude and respect. We acknowledge this land and respect for the Indigenous nations who have cared for Turtle Island, also called North America. The Indigenous people have been gifted the role of caretakers of this land before the arrival of settler peoples until today. But most importantly, we remember the history of these lands and people that have been tainted by poor treatment and a lack of friendship with the First Nations who called Canada home before it was given this name. This history is something that everyone is affected by. We are all treaty people in Canada. We all have a shared history to reflect on, and each of us is affected by this history in different ways. Our past defines our present, but if we move forward as friends and allies, it does not define our future. All right. Thank you, everyone. And now let's take a look and meet our co-hosts for today's show. First off, we've got from Team 4343 uh, and the Youth Council, Achilles. And from Team 6135, Arctos, we have Leah. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Morning. How's it going, Karthik? Uh, it is going great. Um yeah, uh, for everyone who's tuning in, it is not actually the morning, folks. Uh, just uh, <laughs> letting people people know there, it is seven p.m. Uh, Eastern time, but it's the morning somewhere, right, Leah? It always is. There, there we go. All right, folks. Um, on today's show, we have a recap of the provincial championship or a preview of the first championship. And folks, um, if you are watching us live wherever you are right now, you can ask questions in the chat. Just drop them into the Twitch chat and we will get to them on air and do our best to answer them. And uh, also remember, folks, we're here to have some fun and celebrate excellence in our community. So let's stay positive with our comments there. And so now uh, to get things started, you know, like we do on every show, um, it has been a long season and it's important to talk about wellness and how we're taking care of ourselves so want to pass it over to leah and achilles to tell us a little bit about what the youth council is doing this week to take care of themselves so i think one thing that particularly we were talking about actually at dcmp um is that we gotta love singing dancing distressing i think you know at provincials we were all really really stressed we were all busy um but then sometimes the music just comes on you know? So, oh, Achilles, I don't know if we can hear you. Oh, Achilles. I exactly, Leah. Um, ah, there we go. I don't know, especially in my case, I really like Taylor Swift uh, and Shake It Off was played a lot at her competi at competitions this year. So that was really fun to dance and sing. Um, really, really nice to be stressed with. Yeah. I think just overall by singing and kind of dancing and just like letting your feelings out and mingling, it really, really helps you de-stress and maybe feel a little more comfortable. Um, take a moment to, you know, have some fun because, I mean, that's one of the core values, y'all. We got to have fun, so. <laughs> it it definitely is. And so how do you all feel about the live cover band, Supersonic Hearts Band, playing Shake It Off? I was so happy with it. Thank you so much. <laughs> it was really amazing. We, uh, I think the whole stands, everyone was singing, everyone was dancing. I think it was amazing. We got a list of songs that they could play for us or whatever, and they had some suggestions. And I think their initial suggestion was like uh, September by Earth, Wind, Fire. And I'm like, that song is from like 50 years ago. It is a good <laughs> song, but like, let's go. Because like, I resisted my temptation because they had a lot of the 80s and 90s songs. And I was just going to be like, yeah, let's do that, you know? Um uh what was the one that uh, on that list that i was just like oh that would be so much fun uh yeah it was dancing in the dark by bruce springsteen which is like a personal favorite of mine and i'm like okay that is a song for people like you know 20 years older than this target age group <laughs> so we went with uh shake it off and then it was just like yeah Everyone that, that was a win we loved it yeah and then like the rocky theme for the teams coming out was pretty cool and then uh dua lupa like yeah it was uh 
yeah, it was it was a good time, right? So I'm I'm glad you all enjoyed that, and I'm glad everyone was dancing, and it mm -hmm. was a good time. Were you all part of the giant conga line that went around the field before the closing ceremony? Yes, I was, and that was so fun. It was so unexpected, but we just had to join in. It was so long. It just it was, was like wrapping around, and everyone was in it. Yeah, it was really funny to be watching that. <laughs> All right, folks, so as we get started on the show here, just a couple reminders. This is the second last episode of the season. So we're doing tonight's episode, and then we will be back in three weeks' time. We'll be doing a little bit of a recap of the championship, hopefully telling the stories of Canadian teams who have won the championship, or we'll be telling Canadian success stories regardless, and that's going to be uh, a lot of fun. So if you want to get notified about that show and anything else, just uh, turn on your notifications, subscribe, like, do all the things, and uh, you will be there. And then um, also you can find us on Spotify. So if you want to take a look at the link in chat and you will see where to get us on Spotify, subscribe there and you can listen to the show. Um, you know, you won't be able to see Leah and Achilles' amazing youth council uh, cowboy hats, but <laughs> you can still hear the description of them because um, they light up, they're rainbow. So, you know, just giving you everything right there. Uh, and folks, if you are, you know, looking to learn more about how to take your team to the next level or, hey, you're getting ready for championship and you need a couple extra seats on a bus, oh my goodness, the Ontario team Slack is the place to be for all that information. So you'll definitely want to join that right now. And of course, for all our alumni, hey, uh, Achilles and Leah, you're in grade 12, so you're like alumni now. Were you at the alumni social? Yes. Yes, we were. We were sitting together. Did you get a fancy alumni lanyard? Yes. Yes, we did. It's so pretty. It's uh, pretty cool. And so if you want to, sorry, just a <clears throat> choke in here. If you want to stay up to date with all things alumni, um, check out the link going in chat, firstrobotcanada.org slash alumni. Click the link, sign up for mailing lists, sign up for the LinkedIn group, do all the things in there. Um, you'll find a LinkedIn group every so often, like especially next year, you're looking for your summer internship or a co-op term. Just post them there, say, hey, I'm looking at anyone hiring and you might, you never know what you're going to find. It's just uh, great to uh, network away in there. So that'll be good. All right, folks, that is the news updates for this week. So we will be back in just a moment after a word from one of our sponsors, Rockwell Automation. All right, folks, we are back, and now it's time to start talking about Crescendo, Week 6, and Provincials. And to do that, we're going to bring in our special guest for this show, First Canada MC and alum, 2022 North Bay Volunteer Appreciation Award winner, Sydney Lamori. Hey! Hello, Sydney. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're talking all things provincial, and who better to have than our MC from the technology division. You were there from start to finish, leading the teams out through the tunnel. Um, it was a great time. So how are you doing, Sydney? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing amazing. My voice, it's its almost fully back, but you know what? I expected it to be fully gone, um, but so excited to talk about everything that happened this past week. It was spectacular phenomenal as connor would say the vibes they were immaculate <laughs> he would say that over and over again um how <laughs> was your voice on sunday was sunday a rough day for you sunday i slept for 16 hours straight so i can't tell you how my voice was i was asleep um... there you go <laughs> i uh i woke up and i was like because you, you know like when you do these events or whatever you, you just kind of pace yourself and then i 
I was like, okay, I, my voice has survived. And when I got to finals, I'm like, I can just let it rip now because it doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. So all season <laughs> long is like, you can't let it rip because I got an event the next week, an event the next week. And so it's just like, uh, let it go. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it did. And it was good. So folks, I want to ask all of you, um, what impressed you the most about this weekend's provincial championship? Uh, maybe we'll start with Leah. Oh my God. It's so hard to just pinpoint one. I mean, we got to say, first of all, the high scores, they, they kept being beaten on both fields too. It was just like one second, we think we got a high score. Another second, boom, like a new high score, especially in playoffs. Like that was really, really cool to watch. I mean, and like, I don't know. I think one thing that's just more general would be, I, I got to give credit to the human players. Cause like, over the season, the improvement that I've seen is significant. Like they they know when to amplify. And it's so fun to like see them get the spotlights. And like it's it's just I love it. <laughs> what about you, Achilles? I have to agree with Leah, all of the the world records being broken and just all of the action on the different fields. Um another thing was like watching everyone from different teams like talk and get to know each other um it was really amazing to like watch that like that's always such a, an integral part of first events and it's so fun to see at provincials because that's where the most teams get to interact with each other um because it's the finals of the uh it's the pretty much the finals for um ontario before houston and, and what about you sydney what impressed you so for me the past year or so since we came back from quarantine, the stands have been relatively quiet. But I think this year the teams are really starting to find their voice again. And that was one of the things that drew me into coming back to first. It's not just cheering for your team. It's cheering for the amazing feats of innovation and, and engineering happening on the field. And I'll say the stands and technology were so loud. It was amazing. Some of the field resetters had to get earplugs. And that's the exact environment I want to be in. Yeah, credit to fifty twenty four for that. They were they were really good. They uh, are 610, everyone. Uh, fifty four oh nine. Forty nine forty. Forty nine forty. Yeah. Fifty fifty twenty four. Can I just say <clears throat> I loved where they sat because they were really close to the main stage, and if I ever needed noise, I could just kind of look at them, and they just did it, and it was just like, yeah. oh, this is this is great. This is the kind of spirit the kind of energy you want to see so it was yeah. good um on the topic of high scores so i, I would be remiss you know because like we, we pump up ontario when we can but like mm -hmm. the high scores set in ontario that that 150 got blown away over the weekend in other regions um georgia had like a 160 something and in a wild match, and then three times four times actually uh 254 and 1678 uh, went over that number and finished with a 175 and actually um, with penalties I believe the final score in one of their matches was 170 189 to 130 imagine scoring 130 points and losing by a lot mm -hmm. like just being blown out it was it was uh it is wild to see and so you know, when I, when I think about um, my next question, what I'm most surprised about, I'm not actually surprised about, but I'm just so excited for Houston to see what these scores are going to get up to when you have these great robots. And like, I don't actually know that one, that 175 will be beat because like the combination of 254 and 1670, it could be the two best robots in the world. I know we got one in Ontario that's going to have something to say about that, but like it could be two of the best and um, they played at an event together already this season. So they had a chance to kind of go through the motions and they were just, it was very well oiled. Um, but I, I think what I was really interested by was um, the few, the handful of alliances that were playing triple offense in the playoffs and actually playing with two feeders and one robot doing the cleanup. And that's what ended up working really well out in California this weekend um, uh, where 254 could score four notes in five seconds. It was wild to see just like, boom, boom, and like their amplification periods weren't lasting 10 seconds because they were finishing the four notes so quickly. And I, you, you almost forget that the amplification ends after you put in four notes because it doesn't usually, if it happens, it happens like right at the end. Um, but I, I, yeah, I was just interested in the, um, the different strategies, but um, I would love to know from each of you, like Achilles, like what surprised you the most this weekend? 
I would have to say, um, like watching all the like watching all the crazy matches on technology, especially with how like finals played out, um, in terms of like one moving to the lower bracket or alliance one moving to the lower bracket and like alliance one staying in the upper bracket. That was like really interesting to see all of the um the lower lines of staying in the higher bracket and the upper bracket and um, watching everything go to the finals. Yeah. Can I add on that? Cause that's also what surprised me the most sure. for round one, typically you see the Alliance one or Alliance two move forward for the mm -hmm. most, all but one match in round one, the blue Alliance one. And in the final re uh, in the final matchup, we saw a rematch of Alliance 7 and Alliance 2, but on the opposite sides as you'd expect. We had Alliance 7 and Alliance 8 in round four in the upper bracket. Um, it was absolutely amazing to watch. And then Alliance 2 fought their way all the way back up through the lower bracket to rematch Alliance 7 in the finals and then went over to take the entire division. Yeah, it was... It was uh it was really cool to see it. I think it just speaks to the depth of teams in Ontario that, it, you know, you can put together a really strong alliance at seven. Like, if you look at that number seven alliance that went to the finals, that's 5409, the uh, best stage robot in the world with their triple trap. Um, 1285 and 7558. Like, it's just like, those are three great robots and you have them on one alliance and they can put up 24 stage points regularly and they can score a boatload, you know, like they don't have the necessary individual scoring power that 40, 39 or 44, 76 did in that division, but having three of them, Ooh, mm -hmm. it was, it was wild. And then poor, poor Alliance one, um, 9098, um, you know, they, they did their best with 4907, another great team or whatever, but uh, this, you, you run into some buzz saws and, you know, that's how you, unfortunately can get knocked out early and it was uh it just it was no one no one played poorly or did badly it was just that there were the alliances were deep and with the the serpentine draft you know it's there's some advantage to seeding lower to a certain degree so it was uh very very cool yeah and it, with the strategy Exactly. The strategy, the alliance picking in the strategy. Usually we see alliance captains pick other alliance captains. We only had that happen once on technology and the strategy proved amazing for all of these alliances. Well, I, I, I hesitate to say for all of them because I think uh, it, you know, like, you know, some some got knocked out early, and I think it's just like strategy. Like you, it's okay that if someone executes a better strategy. I think some people have better picking strategies for sure. You know, and I think Alliance Seven, like they had done their scouting and done their homework to put together that strong of an alliance down there. And we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Alliance Eight because they almost, you know, they took uh, they like I think they were limited by one point. Like uh, in their last match, I think against uh, Alliance One, the second time when they played them, and so they you know had a shot at them, and that was uh, wild. So like you know Alliance Eight, forty sixty nine, and company down there. So it's just um, it was it was neat to see. So yeah, that was definitely we're talking about surprises. That was a big surprise. So um, my next question is, uh, and I wrote this question before I saw today's team update, but we'll talk about today's <laughs> team update. In how do you think the game will change at champs? So. During the regular season, the threshold for the RP was 18 notes. 18 notes or 15 were co-op. And then this past weekend, it um, jumped to 21 notes or 18 with co-op. Uh, at the championship, you need 25 notes to get the uh, ranking point or 21 with co-op, which is interesting because um, the championship traditionally has weaker divisions than the top divisions at district championships because everyone at the district championship is qualified on points while at the championship teams have come by a variety of methods which aren't necessarily as robust as the point system and such so 25 is a big number um i have some thoughts on how this is going to change things but i'd love to hear what others think i mean 21 was already pretty damn difficult i'll say but i think that's when strategy comes in i mean i think especially by the end um of provincials we saw a lot of teams ferrying the notes over and like that proved to be a really really good strategy so maybe we'll see more of that so that they can achieve this threshold because i mean melodies it's nice to achieve <laughs> i yeah I, uh, sorry achilles 
don't know. I would have to agree with Leah uh, the same thing. I think strategy is going to come really into play. Um, working with your alliance and working to their strengths to like maximize the amount of notes that you can get. Um, also, a lot of defense. So like trying to um, sort of maximize or uh, find a clear path and use defense to get that clear path for your robots so that way you can uh, get the notes um, back to your area so that way you can shoot at the speaker. Um, but yeah, strategy is going to come really into play. I So 25 notes is a lot. And if, oh, if your alliance is playing triple offense, you can get there, but like if there's a defender and it's hard, 25 notes through defense, um, I would say that this change definitely benefits the top teams of the world um, where the teams who can really have that good match and, you know, um, do 15 game pieces in a match or whatever, which doesn't, no one's really averaging that, but some teams are hitting that, you know, here, here, there. like if you can do that, then it's like still need 10, but it's 21 with co-op. So co-ops worth four now, not three. So the importance of just hit that co-op button right away, everyone. Just hit that co-op button right away to bring it down to 21, which we know is a, a number that we've seen hit or whatever. 25 is um, – and, and I, I don't think we need to spend too much time talking about 25 because, like, uh, if you look back at Provincials, like, co-op was 75% of the matches. You know, it was happening very, very often. And I think at Champs, I think most people are going to hit it right away. <laughs> um until you get into strategic weirdness that I am um, not really the biggest fan of, but I can, we can talk about that another time. Um, okay. So we're talking about the provincial championship and what it's just like the biggest density of like teams with great ideals and gracious professionalism. So I'd love to hear each of you tell me a little bit of story about some gracious professionalism that you saw. I mean, I can start. I am. So I'm the drive coach of Arctos. And so I, I was on the field a lot and I, I was working with a lot of different teams. And I, I think one thing I really was happy to see was all of the support that each team had right before their matches. A lot of teams had a little, like right before their matches, they would get together in a little circle and they do something together, um, like a three, two, one, something, or, you know, and it's just really, really always heartwarming to see them encouraging each other. I mean, cause matches are stressful and it's like, you've got your team, they've got your back, and you've got each other. Um, and especially going into playoffs, I saw that expand into the alliance. So it wasn't just teams doing that. It was the whole alliance coming together and doing so. And it was just so heartwarming to see that. That's that's really nice. What about you, Sydney? I completely agree. I think, especially on the technology side, I think everyone was well aware of the giants that were over on the science side. And so they knew where they were in for a challenge. And there was so much support and camaraderie and coming together and everyone was helping each other improve their strategy, improve their robots, improve their gameplay, all seemingly in preparation for that final matchup. And it was so nice to see when I went back behind the stands to see the final alliance and leave them out. No one was scared. Well, everyone was a little nervous, but everyone was excited and happy and ready to have a great time and do their absolute best. And I think that really just shows the, the supportive community behind first and everyone was really there for each other. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Achilles? Um, I was like, so in between what I was doing in terms of awards or um, youth council, um, I did media for my team. And it's always really nice seeing all of the media members of every team, sorry, in the media box, um, talking to everyone, regardless of what alliance or team you are. Sorry. Um, it's just really, really nice to see everyone. You know, um, I think my favorite thing was uh, during before the finals, the FLL Explore Festival and the students who were coming up to pick their awards and how all the high school students were just uh, so supportive and loud for the Explore students. I just thought that was uh, really nice for those uh, young ones to be elevated on the same sort of stage that, you know, like Leah, you and all your compatriots were on, uh, you know, throughout the weekend. And that, so that was just like, it'd be very easy for people to kind of tune it out. It's like, oh, it's just another thing until final starts or whatever. I'm going to go get a slice of pizza or something. But people were like in the stands cheering for them. And I thought that was really cute. So I just thought that was uh, 
just a nice thing for people to do. Yeah. All right, yeah. folks. Sorry, Sydney, go on. I was going to say there's so much brains and intelligence in such tiny packages. It's so hard not to cheer really loud for it. It's amazing. Exactly. Adorable. All right, folks, uh, we are going to be back in a moment. We're going to talk specifically about the more about provincials and the data and all the cool things. But before we do that, let's take a look at a word from one of our sponsors, 3M Canada. So first robotics competition is the epitome of the robotics competitions here in Canada. Um, it's an opportunity for high school students to get involved in the engineering design of an entire robotic system. People think robotics is all about building the robot, right? But building the robot is only half the challenge. The, the building the robot is actually a vehicle for you to, to build your own self. For our Canadian manufacturers to stay competitive, there's a lot of automation and robotics that have to go into our manufacturing facilities. So the, the skills that the kids are learning in this competition hit that mark uh, spot on. There's definitely the technical ones. You know, I've learned how to do CAD design. I've learned how to work machines. Um, but one of the really, really big ones that I really like is I've, I, and I think it's really important in this world, is I've learned how to work with a team. Um, without being able to work as a team going into industry. It's just, it's not going to work out. There are absolutely skills that the students are using today that are things that we use in professional careers that have to do with STEM. Um, they are learning how to communicate. They are learning how to collaborate. They're learning how to think outside the box so that they're not limiting themselves to, to one thing. They're getting to do coding, marketing, design, um, engineering, science, the whole nine yards all together. It really teaches you all these different skills that you wouldn't think that you would know. It teaches you, you know, how to work with other people, how to do um, soft skills, you know, communication, teamwork, leadership, all that kind of stuff. Some of our alumni have gone on to receive excellent scholarships at top tier universities and because of that they've started getting known well by top tier companies, uh, which allows our brand to carry on as they work for large technological companies in the programming sector, in the automation sector. It's really interesting to see where we end up. All right, folks, we're back. We're talking about provincial championships. So let's take a look at some of the stats, folks, of what happened. And we're going to start us off in the science division. All right, folks, so I got a lot of comments about this, but guess what? The snowman is back. If you weren't tuned in last time, you wouldn't really know. But, you know, like, so here is most of the teams. Here is the buttons. And then, well, actually, let me let me do that again, because uh, here is the buttons. And then here is the head. And there is just this giant gap here, folks. Team 2056 was in their own land. And so last time we kind of said like, hey, maybe that gap is going to shrink at the provincial championship. It did not. It got bigger. Which uh, I didn't see coming. <laughs> um, this is fantastic. This is phenomenal. Um, it is. It, it was just wild to see. Like there was this tier in here that was absolutely phenomenal as well. Um, 4678, 2200, 3683 is the green dot. I, I love that it's color coded by team. So even though the dot doesn't have the number, I'm like, who else is that bright green? It's team Dave. Uh, Alpha Dogs, um, Re Revolt and 1114 just kind of at the border of that tier uh, right there. And so that was... Um, Science division uh, was wild. Achilles, your team was on science division, right? No, there are you. I see you right there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you, you were there. So what was it like being in a division with that? This, like, oh, first of all, let me just sorry, Achilles. These teams here are all really, really good. Some of the best in the world. So like, but the gap is just massive. Sorry, mm -hmm. Achilles. What was it like being in this division? 
Um, it was really, really interesting. It was like a little intimidating, not gonna lie. Like just like thinking about going against twenty fifty six or like some of those really good teams and depending on how the alliance was set up, but it was really fun um to like challenge ourselves to try and go against like to try and work with our alliance to go against um whatever alliance we may be facing because of the amount of skill that I know that all of these teams have put in. Um so it was definitely a really great um learning experience and it was really really fun to watch this side and i will say and um i'll have a lot to say about this in my presentation at the championship in a couple of weeks but epa can vary which is the stat that's generating these graphs can very much undersell teams and like let me just tell you let me point out some teams that epa just was wrong on uh 75 712 who was fantastic and you know they are uh, were you know, ended up as the number three seed in the division, moved on uh, a couple rounds over there. And so them, uh, 71, 81, was just a scoring machine. Their numbers are super low. Um, 11, 14 numbers are deflated by their performance at new market. And they had a brand new robot for their next two events. So like combining those two is, is very weird. So their, their numbers probably like, you could probably add seven to their EPA based on that. And so like that puts them out there. And then 29, 39, 29, 35 folks. They were phenomenal. I just, that four note auto, uh, just great scoring. You know, I called them the best tank robot in the world. 9098, who we'll talk about in a second. We'll challenge them for that. 971 in California, we'll challenge them for that. But 2935, Naki, just, just, just fabulous. So EPA undersold some of those teams. 9785, who we saw how good they were in the finals, um, and undersold. Oh, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about 1241, who we will be talking about, who will be showing one of their matches. And, Look, they're they're this far down, but they were the third pick in the division. Third overall pick in the division. EPA doesn't always tell the whole story, folks. Here, where's the fourth pick in the division? Right here, folks. Like it's just uh and folks, if you were doing your pick list just based on EPA, you're missing out. You're missing out. Um, you know, uh OPR tells you a lot more than EPA after you've played eight, nine, ten qualifying matches. But hey. You want to learn more, come to my presentation at Championship or tune into the video. That'll be released after Championship. We'll do a deep dive right there. So let's take a look at our Science Division alliances. Oh, shout out. We got first updates now in the chat. Hey, all. Thank you for your awesome hospitality, Ontario Provincials. Your event was incredible. It was a pleasure to meet so many of you. Good luck to teams at Worms. Yeah, Worlds. First updates now was there. They interviewed a whole bunch of teams. I think they got like nine or 10 beyond the bumpers features that are going to be released throughout the season. So that's going to be really cool. And so we've got some really cool up close footage as well. So uh, uh, a shout out to them for coming out. And actually, if you want to see my presentation at championship, first updates now is going to have it on their YouTube channel. They may be streaming it live depending on the internet connection, but they'll have it on their YouTube channel. So people can see that. Okay, folks, total EPA after I just kind of ranted about how EPA is the end all and be all, but it's still pretty good stat it is still a very very good stat so don't take it the wrong way 120 folks 2056's epa alone was 59.7 um the, the closest year is the alliance six with 99 you know alliance four to 93 like it just I, I you run out of things to say um it helps when you add a team 4056 is so good. And then you add 4678 to the Alliance, who is phenomenal. 4678 has a real claim to being, you know, over the last three years, being the second best team in Ontario overall. Um, that's a, they could make that, they, you know, 3683 is in that category, 2200 is in that There's a lot of teams, but 4678, finalist of provincials two years ago, finalist of provincials last year, and winning provincials this year. Um, just a, a phenomenal team. And 97.85, folks, rookie team, um, fantastic. Uh, wins the division, wins the whole thing. Uh, simple robot, all girls team with, what, six members. And you know what they did? They just built the West Coast Products competitive concept robot and drove the heck out of it. That The blueprints for that robot were online since week three. Anyone could have done it, and they just went and did it. It was amazing, so kudos to them. Um, anyone have any thoughts on these alliances? I mean, I think fun. it's amazing that the robot with the lowest EPA is an alliance captain. Yeah. Oh, oh let's talk about 9262, folks. Humberside. 
and like Leah, I know you know them uh, fairly well. I love this story, folks. So they came to their first event with the Kitbot, which is which is great. You know, Kitbots are fantastic, and they were a little bit nervous at their first event, and the first couple of matches didn't go great or whatever. They were worried about their hanger, which they then got working. But then either they changed the gearing or they changed their code, and suddenly that robot became fast. And they went to their next event, and they got a little bit better and whatever. And then by provincials, they're an alliance captain. And this is another team who their EPA undersells them because they started the season off so slowly. And EPA has a long memory. So here's what I want people to understand. EPA is not an event-specific stat. It incorporates the whole season and even incorporates past seasons. So it has a long, long memory. And it remembered 9262's uh, slow start. But wow, were they cooking at champs. Wow, were they good. And so, you know, and... They even won one match in the playoffs. Like eight seeds often don't do that. And so that was fantastic. And then of course they made some great picks of 88, 84 and 781, but another alliance that was cooking. So let's jump on over to the technology division. And here, this is what a normal division looks like, folks, where it's like there's no snowman. It's like there's teams all over the place or whatever. 40 39, definitely the top team in the division. 44 76. The next team in the division. So you're probably going to be like, oh, so 40 39 seeded number one and pick 44 76. That is not what happened. Uh, 9098 seeded number one, fabulous team. We've talked about them at length, but they didn't pick 40 39 or 44 76. They picked uh, 4907, which was, you know, 4907 is this dot right here. So another really, really strong team. But Teams are trying to form their alliances in in their own sort of way. So I think a lot of people were very surprised that 9098 didn't try and pick 4039 or 4476. Um, and then oh, when people saw 4039 and 4476 get together, they're like, oh, well, this is over. They're going to win this division. But then they lost their first match. And it's just like anything can happen. So if you think you know what's going to happen in alliance selection, you might not. And if you think you know what's going to happen in the matches, you might not. It surprises all the time. And it's like Sydney, you were telling us before, like Alliance versus seven versus Alliance seven versus Alliance eight in the upper bracket. We had Alliance one versus two, I think, in the lower bracket at one point. It was just wild to see. So now let's go take a look at our um, alliances. And right here, we see, let me just get that dot off the screen. Uh, alliance two, 105 EPA. That's massive or whatever. And so you know, they they were the overwhelming favorite on this division, but they got knocked out. Because, like, look how balanced all the other alliances are. 93, 88, 94, 86, 88, 87, 78. It's all within range. So not surprising that it went well. It went, you know, we had some different stuff in there. Um, shout out to Sparkling H2O, 8729, home of the shark, coming as a backup bot, but a backup bot with a massive EPA. So uh, that worked out really nicely for Alliance 2, and they had the ability to switch between those robots. And uh, uh, Sparkling H2O played most of the division, but then um, 1310 came back in for the final match, which was um, really nice for them to see. Uh, any thoughts on our technology? Oh, I titled the slide wrong. Come on, Karthik. <laughs> I mean, I got to say, though, it was like, this is, again, really where the strategy came into play. Like, Alliance 8 was so strong. And like, you've got three offense spots that are phenomenal, right? So I don't know, I think it's really hard to just like, yes, there's Alliance 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, 6, 7, 8. But like, numbers don't matter as much. It was really nice to see that. All right, so let's take a look now that we've done that and uh, at some match video, folks. So we're first off, we're going to start off with, oh, we're going to play a fun one. Science round four, match 12, lower bracket. We got Alliance uh, three versus Alliance six. And this is the second time they played. First time they played, they both put up 120 points and we're going to uh, do this again. And maybe we can get the play button out of the match and take it somewhere else. Okay, so let's start this match and let me get my pen and let's go into autonomous. And it's like, 
this was one of the closest matches of the season. It was one of the high at the time. It was one of the highest scoring matches for both alliances combined. And you just see how every the center line is being cleared of notes. And boom, right away in autonomous mode. So Red's got a little bit of a lead, 41-36, but that's basically nothing at this point. That's just one note in the speaker while amplified. And you see 49-46 coming out quickly to pass, and uh, Blue Lines 80-81 is coming out to pass. Leah, you were talking about this. The passing strategy was the dominant strategy at Provincials. Yeah. So we have, like, you know, double feeding going on for the Blue Alliance, trying to leave as much room there for 2,200. And the Red Alliance is going with the feeding, and just amplified amplified it's just like this match was just back and forth back and forth and so right now the blue alliance using three robots to feed at their station coming in and out of there so you can run into some traffic jams there and that can be dangerous because when you get into traffic you the, any second that's slowed down here is a second of ampl amplification loss so you see reds moved out to you know a nice lead here um and if you watch that they're kind of keeping their source zone. There's never more than two robots there, which I think works out really nicely. And what we're tr having trouble seeing um, behind the amps is that a lot of people, so a lot of notes are being fed, but a lot of notes are being stolen as well. So if your opponent is feeding notes across the field like this, um, instead of going to pick up a note from your source, you need to steal these from them because then every note that you're scoring is worth more points because it's points that are being denied and you've you've undone the work they did to do that pass, which is basically killing a cycle. And this match is just, I don't even know what to say about this match because there's so much happening at once. It's just back and forth. So now Blue's flipped into the lead here. And honestly, at this point, I had no idea who was going to win. I was just like, I, I don't even know what's happening. I can't keep up. There's just too much scoring going on. And so Red takes the lead again based on a really nice amp cycle. And 49.46 is still feeding with 18 seconds left. And so they're going to come down to see if they can, like, feeding with 15 seconds left. That's a wild decision right there. And then Blue takes the lead again. And we're going to come down here into end game and 2200 going up for the trap and they just that was so miss close. so so close and why does that matter let's jump ahead to the final score mm -hmm. 127 to 125 scoring 125 points and losing and that's how you get eliminated from the lower bracket like, I mean, 2,249.76 there were just cooking, you know? Um, you know, comment in chat, just having 2,200 there for just clean up just isn't enough. Um, you know, it's probably, probably not the way that I would phrase that, but, uh, you know, that's, you know, an interesting way. I just think that um, the Red Alliance was fantastic right there um, with how they handled things, and it was it was close, you know? And um, that trap there could have flipped it, you know? And so if that trap goes in, we're talking about this match very, very different. You know, we're not saying that it wasn't enough. So that was um, a really uh, interesting one there. Look at those speaker scores, over 100 points for each. I don't know. That was just uh, phenomenal. Um, it's really the feeling. Yeah, and 4976, Rye 4976 miss, mentions they missed a last second speaker shot too. So like one shot could have tied it there and then the tiebreaker would have gone to penalties and then it would have gone to speaker score. So like it could have gone so differently. Sydney, what do you think of that match? It was so much to watch. It was absolutely incredible. I didn't know where to focus my eyes. I was expecting the human player to throw the high notes a little bit sooner. I'm surprised that they didn't take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, was that on the red alliance that didn't throw? I didn't I didn't watch that portion of it. Or saw, was it blue I think I saw the blue alliance throwing. Okay, yeah. So I didn't see anything high Everything was happening so fast. I don't know if I missed it. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Red Alliance wasn't because 4946, as we saw last week on this show, um, at one point they threw a high note and it landed on their robot and kind of got in the way. So they were just kind of like, we're not taking risks or whatever, and we're leaving that out or such. And um, on practice day, the Red Alliance, I didn't really notice that they were throwing their notes, but um, I saw the wildest thing where their human player threw a high note and it was a little bit low. And it hit the high note in 2200's stripper that they were trying to put in the trap. And it knocked that note out. And then the high note went into the trap. Which was just... <laughs> You're right, Leah? You're just like, what? What? 
That's crazy. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it was like I was like, "What did I just see?" And like their coach Adam Bobchek, because he was like, "Did you just see that?" I was like, "Yeah, I saw that. That was the weirdest." There was another one where um, thirteen oh five shot a note, and it was going a little bit low, but twenty fifty six shot a note, and they're on the same lines so hard it hit the note that 1305 that was going low and it took both of them into the speaker <laughs> we, we we need like a trick shot day right you know like uh that was um fantastic I love that. yeah that that was very cool so that was um our highest scoring match with both the lines is combined but now of course it's time for the final. So we're going to take a look back at uh, finals two from provincials featuring teams 2056, 46, 78, 97, 85 on red and 4039, 44, 76, and 13, 10 in blue. And let's take a look at this one. And again, you know, with these robots, take a look at the center line to see what happens there. 2056 fast, 46, 78 fast, waffles right in there. And Center line's empty by the time 2056 comes back around for another note. Yeah. It, it's cleared. Get used to this, folks. This is the way the center line is going to look. Go forward. Let's, let's pause right here for a second. At the beginning. Clear so let's pause right here. And you see the center line. There, there's nothing there right there. And so it's a wild way to start a match. But this is going to be how things are for the next little while. So let's go back in here. And so right away, 2056 is feeding 87 to 89, starts to feed here. And so 87 to 89 was an incredibly virtual, versatile robot. Some matches they played source defense. I mean, they played speaker defense. Some matches they played source defense. And this match they're feeding. And so it's just a, a wide assortment. So going double feed here uh, for 2056 and uh, 9785, feeding to 4678. Um, and then there's just like all sorts of random stuff happening here. So like the waffles are playing defense now because they had their arm up there so that was uh interesting and you know uh just i i mean like I, with 2056 it's just like watch and enjoy um 4039 with a little bit of defense on there that's to try and slow them down i think it's like the first match was uh a large victory for the red alliance i think blue alliance is just trying to do different things here to uh, to come up with you know a, a approach and that's what i respect because like madness is just beating yourself you know, smashing your head into the wall, running the same strategy over and over again. So I definitely respect the change of pace here. And then um 4039, um uh something weird happened to their arm there. They lost an encoder, their arm wrapped all the way around. So that kind of throws this out in finals two now is uh it was going to it was already a big gap before this happened, but then this continues to happen. I'm just watching 9785. Um I love this team. Just rookie team in the finals they're not playing like rookies at all just like smart strategy um and a small team too like six students you know like how do you do all this with six students it's fantastic and 13 10 trying to play a little bit also got, like partnerships with i think alt f4 and so it's like mentor yep mentee relationship yeah and and you know alt f4 they Helped so many teams this year, including uh, this rookie, 9785. I know they were really supportive for 5834 this year and others. Just uh, another um, great team. And so, you know, we're coming down to the end game here. Um, yeah, this was a match to say. Nice harmony climb, 1310 and 4476 yeah. to get two on a chain. Always nice there. Want to maximize your points. Uh, and let's jump ahead to the final score. As we see, 106 to 64. So, like, you know, the defense there did um, slow things down for sure for 2056 because they were normally in, like, the 120s and 130s. Um, so, they knocking some points out of there. But good defense throughout eliminations, like, even during tech finals. Yeah. And did, did they play in tech finals? I thought they were out by then. They were playing – oh, maybe not in finals, but they were playing for one of the matches – yeah, great defense. They, yeah, they they played early, and then I think yeah, you know, bringing in a backup bot because a sparkling H two O was a good offensive robot. So to mm -hmm. have both options there, you know, it's like yeah. it, it's really nice there. And so like bringing thirteen ten because um, I know for the first final match they tried with sparkling H two O, and you know um the sharks you know got some something in their fins, I guess I don't know, <laughs> um, but then thirteen ten came in and they you're right, yeah. Leah, fantastic defense, it was great uh, collaboration. Uh, 
All right, folks. So now um, that is, we can take, it's, you know, uh, time to recognize uh, some of the teams from the events. Uh, is there a link to the first Ontario Slack? Yeah, it was posted a little bit earlier, and I think we can get that posted again. So we'll have someone post that for you. Uh, all right. So, folks, recognizing our winners, our champions, Science Division champions, and first Ontario Provincial Championship champions uh, for the fifth time winning Provincials. Five out of the six years they have won it. Team 2056 OP Robotics. And alongside Team 4678 Cybercabs, after being finalists two years in a row, getting the gold. And Team 9785 Electrona. Um, rookie team, first year, wins Provincials. Not bad way to start your career, right, folks? Mm -hmm. Not at all. Finalist Team 4039 Makeshift, 4476 Waffles. What a dynamic al alliance they were. Uh, and you got to love the you know, going down to the lower bracket early and then coming through. And that's what happened on technology last year to 2056 and 2200. They went down early, 9098, 9098, 31, 61, 2702, knocked them down to the lower bracket. But it's to show that going to the lower bracket isn't the end. Is it a long journey? Yes. Do you have to play a lot of matches quickly? Yes, but um, it can be done. So folks, don't fret if you get sent down to the lower bracket. Uh, 1310, you know, Leah talked about their great defense and then Sparkling H2O. And so um, that alliance, that's the format I kind of, like, so at championship in Houston, um, all alliances are, have four teams. And with four team alliances, I think people are going to pick their alliances where you pick, a, you know, one, you know, two offense robots to start, then a defense robot and uh, offense robot. So you can kind of pivot between your three offense strategies or your two offense and one defense. And so, That'll be to see. Um, our Dean's List finalists, folk, the four people who are going to represent Ontario, Jessica C. from Team 4039, Objosh S. from 2702, Hannah L. from 5834, and Alice Z. from Team 3161. So that's pretty cool. Um, you've heard some names, 3161, 4039, 4476 already, and we're going to say those names again because these teams – um and 4039 yeah uh, so 4039 not only did they, they win a division not only did they have a dean's list finalist they also won the impact award but before we get to the impact award engineering inspiration team 3161 the tronic titans so that is very cool uh impact 4039 makeshift um i don't know what there is to be said about makeshift that hasn't been said already they just embody they're just the nicest people i i, I can't even explain it you know it's just kind gracious um i had a chat with them and they were you know wanted to make sure no matter what that their alliance was recognized as an alliance of four and that 1310 was recognized even though they weren't playing in a lot of the matches and they were very insistent on that and i just thought that was such a gracious thing of a captain to make sure of that um team 4476 the waffles uh an impact award uh representing at worlds and they do so much in uh their community so many great online resources, especially when it comes to first Lego League Challenge. So that was fantastic. And Team 7712 Umoja Robotics. I don't know that there's a team that has a greater impact on their community, their individual community, you know, relatively than uh, Umoja. And it's been cool to watch their journey over the years and, you know, um, just seeing how they performed this amazing robot that was, you know, the number three seed in the stack science division. And then, you know, I think ended up uh, in fourth place overall in that division. So picking up some like fourth place Alliance rather uh, just a fantastic job on them and Celtex with a really nice run. That. I think 59, 12 from Jordan uh, as well. So those and are your impact. Shows, sorry. I think it shows that you don't have to be a robot team or an impact team. All these teams really prove that you can be both. And, and, and it's something I'm very proud of in Ontario because there's some yeah. regions where you have like your impact teams, like, you know, who are like, ah, oh, 150th in the district rankings or whatever but our our teams are all around they're just all around strength and i think people realize that um if you have diversity within your team that makes your whole team stronger so if you have some people who excel in the awards area their insights and brainstorming and such will help your robot and those people you know with that very regimented mindset about like design stuff that stuff's actually really useful in making sure your awards package is cohesive and so i've never liked it when people are like you know like oh wait our awards team is over here and our robot team is over here because with the first team like you want all that to come together you want people to learn the different skills you know and you 
I'd love to have people who start as an awards kid, but then end up becoming really technical and people who start as a technical kid, but then realize they have a love for public speaking or something like that. And so don't knock it's the cool. A out of steam. Keep it in. Exactly. It, it belongs. It definitely does. All right, folks, now let's take a look at the final district rankings for Ontario. We'll scroll through our top 22 so you can see who's qualified. At the top, Team 2056, followed by 4039, 4678, 4476, the Alpha Dogs 4946, 7712, 1325. We haven't talked about them today, but just fantastic, consistent robot throughout the season. 5409, best stage robot in the world, I will say, they with the triple trap. Uh, 9785, Alacrona, a rookie team in ninth. Uh, 1241, great performance at championship. They, you know, they they were fantastic at Durham. Uh, and I think they underperformed their own expectations at McMaster, but did they come back firing? So that was fantastic to see. Alt F4, uh, 2200 Rambotics. We saw them earlier. 5406 Celtex. Um, I know they set out this year with a goal of making sure that they qualified via points this year. And hey, congratulations, Celtex. You did it. So that's that's great to see. I know you'll have another great performance at championship. 1285, the biggest birds, they were off for a year or so, but they're back and they're going to Worlds again. Team 3161, Tronic Titans. Uh, 3683, Team Dave. It's maybe 16th in the points rankings, but arguably top three robot in the province. Just fantastic. Uh, 4907, the Thunderstamps. 9098, folks. Second year team qualifying for Worlds again, but last year they couldn't go. This year they're going. So that's fantastic. So, so happy for them. Uh, you talk to that team and it does not, they do not seem like a second year team. They just seem like veterans of years and their students, every single student. And I talked to so many of them. And it was, it's like every single one of them just knows first and gets it. Uh, big fan, big fan. Uh, 4920, Bell River Boltheads going back to Worlds. 5024, Raider Robotics. 610, Crescent Coyotes. And 5885, Villanova Wirecats. And I want to scroll down just for two more here as well. Because um, team... 4678 declined their spot at championship. They aren't able to travel for a variety uh, of reasons. Um, so we want to congratulate them on an amazing season and being one of the best teams in Ontario. And um, we won't see them at Worlds. But And then 1305 declined their spot as well. But the next team in, 4917, Sir Lancer bot. Congratulations. They're going to the World Championship in Houston as well. And we'll also... Further down the list, we have some of our pre-qualified teams. Um, 6865, uh, Manitoulin and Metal, 1114, Symbotics, and... Um, uh beaverworks 2609 so that's our teams that are going to world so that is fantastic to see congratulations to all of them and folks i want to reach out to all of you right now we can uh, take that off the screen right now and here is my plea folks we have 26 amazing teams from ontario plus a team from british columbia and i think four or five three or four or five from quebec all of us, when we are watching the Twitch streams, uh, need to be cheering on all our Canadian teams and giving them support, giving them love in the chat, giving them, no, send them, send, if you have friends on these teams, send them messages, let them know that everyone at home is cheering for them and we're all coming together and we're waving that Ontario flag and we're waving that Canadian flag and we want to see our teams do a great job. Um, you know, some of us will be down there. Uh, if you're tuning into Champs, um, you might want to check out twitch.tv slash first inspires where i will be and we will be doing game day coverage just flipping from division to division to division seeing the best matches so if you just want to sit on one division or whatever you can do that or you can just follow along and flip you know you can have like eight divisions open and just see like what where there's probably a canadian team playing at some point you know so you want to see all that um heading into champs what are people excited for i i think all of you are watching from home so what are you going to be watching for just everything i mean yeah like canadian teams is one thing but also just the high scores i i can't wait to see what new high scores can be like produced from this game it's gonna be really incredible what about you achilles um exactly the same thing as leah as well as like watching all the different strategies and like the way that teams are going to tackle um the game at worlds especially with the 25 brush 25 note thresholds for melody and the 21 with the co-op button seeing how every team works with that and you sydney what are you going to be watching for i'm watching for the stories we've talked about it a lot there's so many amazing stories within first and i can't wait to see more of them unfold at worlds 
Yeah, I mean, that was like kind of the theme at Provincials. You know, every team's got their story and who are the heroes going to be and what does it mean to be an underdog? What does it mean to be a hero? You know, and like we said, Thanos got the Avengers, but the Avengers got Thanos. It can go in either direction, you know, so uh, snap like that. And thank you to the Reddit meme for inspiring half our intros at Provincial. <laughs> Folks, um, Crescendo is a great game. Crescendo is a great game. Um, I am an awe of our teams in Ontario. Um, you know, watching that recap video that we played at the end of Provincial, which will be on our YouTube channel uh, shortly. I got, I got a little teary eyed. Um, you know, I was sitting there with Marie and Jaylene and I was just like, wow, this is, this is our community. Like that video is our community and they're so great. And I just want to see everyone be successful at Worlds. And I know no matter what they're going to represent, they're going to be gracious professionals. Then they're going to remind everyone, um, why Ontario is special and why Canada is special. And I think that's really, really cool. All right, folks, uh, that wraps up another episode of First Canada Live. We will be back on April 30th to tune in to hear about everything that happened at Champs. We'll see if the snowman still exists on the graph. We'll see how that goes. It's April. It's got to have melted by then, right? Or, you know, or, but, you know, Leah, like you said, it's morning somewhere. It's yeah. always snowy somewhere, too. Ooh, so. that's a good one. Pen the, you know, down in Penguin territory, it's going to be pretty <laughs> snowy. Hey, you know, when we brought out all the stuffed animals, was there a penguin, Sydney? Did we have a penguin out there? No. Oh, no, someone's going to get a penguin. Crabs, sloths, snakes, waffles, goose, every Elk. thing. Yeah. Okay. Penguin. Someone needs a penguin mascot for next year. Next That's year. what it's got to be. <laughs> all right, folks. Thank you for joining us on yet another episode of First Canada Live. We will see you in a few weeks. In the meantime, enjoy the championship. Enjoy the time off. And talk soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>